we have a fantastic, fantastic, brilliant mind. And you know what? I cannot even begin to stipulate his credentials because it's, it's going to be the whole day, really. Like this person has achieved quite a lot in his life. And honestly speaking, I got to know him because of Erasmus, because he is also an Erasmus alumni. And he's done quite a lot as well, reaching out to other students, even in Kenya and beyond, to ensure that they can also have the same experience that he had. So he is an Erasmus alumni, and he did his PhD, and he is doing quite a lot um, with Nat Geo. I don't want to mention so much because, like I said, we can spend the whole day here if we start stipulating his CV because it's really that good. So without further ado, his name is Cornelius Okello. He is from Kenya. And so let me welcome him. Cornelius, hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> you flatter me. You flatter me a bit. I don't know why you're buttering me up, but... <laughs> Is it the truth, though? Yeah? Uh, yeah, with some embellishment here and there, but... <laughs> Well, whichever the case, at least there is some quite an extent of the truth because yes, one, yes. you are an Erasmus alumni, right? Yeah, yes, and I am. You also do research with Nat Geo, right? <laughs> uh, yes, you are. <laughs> we fund some of my research. We fund some of my research. Yeah, you're just being modest, mm -hmm. but it's okay. It's okay to be modest. Um, but no one has accused me of modesty before, but. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, I am glad that you took time off your schedule to join us onto this channel. So thank you so much for joining us. And maybe you can introduce yourself, you know. Uh, thank you for having me. As you mentioned, my name is Cornelius Okello. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wear many hats. I am a lecturer at Machakos University. Uh, currently, I am doing a postdoctoral uh, fellowship at the University of Cape Town. Okay. Uh, that's what National Geographic is funding. It's a project that is being done at UCT, but it's being funded by National Geographic. Yeah. I'm an under Erasmus alumnus okay. twice over. I did my master's first with Erasmus Mundus, and then I did my PhD with Erasmus Mundus. Yeah. I'm also the co-founder and director of, of Eracoma. Yeah. Uh, it's a consultancy firm. We do a lot of research. We do a lot of consultancy uh, we are also now in the process of registering it as an NGO because, okay. as we said, it's it's important to give back. It's important to yeah. not just do things for profit, but also to give back. Right. I'm, I'm an environmentalist. I think that's the simplest way of putting it. I'm an environmentalist. Yeah. I work a lot to do with freshwater management, especially in the coastal areas right. and also climate change. Now, yeah. I'm, my research is moving a lot towards nature-based solutions because... Um, and I think a lot of times we find ourselves looking at hard uh, solutions like dams and seawalls, etc. But if we can find a way to capitalize on nature-based solutions, then we can get what we refer to as core benefits. Yes. Basically, adapting to the to the things uh, to the dangers of climate change while right. benefiting from the same services nature is giving us. So yeah, that okay. is me in a nutshell. Oh, absolutely amazing. I, I mean, come on, you already stipulated quite a lot of things that you have been able to achieve and you're still achieving. So uh, big ups to you, you know, um, accept it. It's it's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> accept and move on. Accept and move on and, and own them, really. So um, you mentioned that you started your journey as an Erasmus student, but let's go back to the very, very, very beginning because I know that we share common interest. We are KU comrades. I may be wrong. <laughs> yes, <think>. yes. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I think that is one of the things that maybe we need to, to talk about. So let's get uh, started from the journey where you finished your undergraduate, let's let's begin there in Kenyatta University I would presume and then sought to study uh, keep on studying anyways all the way to a PhD so what was one of your motivation to pursue higher education in the first place oh that's a <laughs> that's an interesting story because by the time I was graduating from KU I had no intention of going back to ac academia I was like focused now I'm done with studying because Believe it or not, I never liked school. I know yeah. if I tell people this and they find it hard to believe, but I never did like school. So when okay. I was done with my 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 undergrad in environmental sciences, I was like, okay, let me get into the work into yeah. the working space. Let me make money. I'm ready to make money. Yeah. 
one and a half years of looking for a job and not getting it, I right. get an internship at, uh, at UNEP. So I'm yeah. there for about three months. Um, okay. Then I meet somebody who I've known, who I'd known yeah. actually. I, and I was like, hey, yeah. hook me up. I mean, get me get me a job at the UNEP. He tells me, honestly, with your undergrad, the only thing you can do is get in as a general staff. Nairobi right. office, you'll never become a, a professional, which is where you start making money. Like yeah. the people who make money at the UN are professionals and above. Right. And he tells me the best you can do, uh, the best I can advise you is get a master's. Yeah. And then come back. We'll see if you can get you can get your you, into the P level. Oh. Now wow. I've always wanted to travel. I've yeah. always wanted to travel. Even when I was applying before I came to KU, I'd applied to 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 um several universities abroad. I'd always okay. wanted I not that I wanted to run away from Kenya. I just wanted <laughs> to see yeah. Yeah. like is, somebody once wrote that he who doesn't travel thinks his mother's cooking is the best. I wanted yeah. to see what how other mothers cook and see whether truly my mother's cooking was the best. Okay. But because of funding, I was I got accepted in several degree programs, but I was not able to go there because of the funding. Right. I mean, if somebody's telling you school fees is sixteen thousand dollars, sixteen thousand pounds a year, that's about two million. Yeah. How many of us can afford two million? Yeah. So um. Then, since I'd always wanted to travel, and now someone is telling me the best way to do is get your masters and. Don't do it in Kenya, especially yeah. if you want to work in an international organization like the UN. Diversify. Right. Yeah. So I started now actively looking for master's programs. Right. Especially scholarships. And then I remember this was January 2008. Yeah, oh. I'm that old. Yeah. Uh, around <laughs> January 2008, um, this uh, lady working at the UN sent an email to all interns in the okay. UN saying, oh, this is called the Erasmus. I want to tell you about it. So right. come over lunchtime. So I sacrificed my lunch. I had got two friends who used to do have lunch with that told, hey, let's go for them. Like, hey, no, over lunch, no, maybe during a working okay. hours. I said, ah, let me go listen to her because I really wanted to do. I was looking okay. for scholarships. Yeah. So she tells us about this amazing program where you get to go to all these different countries. I'm like, ah, so instead yeah. of getting to one country, I'll go to three, four countries. Yes. Sign me up. Right. Sign me up. Yeah. So at that point, I'd, I'd applied for other programs. I'd applied for programs in Japan, programs in U UK, programs in, in Australia. Okay. Nothing. Just getting rejections. Just getting rejections. So, or if I get if I get an acceptance, they they are they're like, yeah, come, but, but pay for you. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I look at this program and they tell me I, I I go through the details. See, you can apply for up to three programs, etc. So I look, look, look. I find the one that I like. Okay. Water and coastal management because at that time I was already interested in working in in, in water management. Right. Because um, we know water, most yeah. important element on the, on the globe and it's it's disappearing right. then i applied i didn't actually even apply for three of them i just found water and coastal management focused on this applied right. for it that was in january 2009 actually wow. no 2000, 2009 yeah that's a long time ago yes in april i get an email telling me yeah. you've been accepted yeah all expenses paid i'm like nah first of all i was the only one in the office because it's to get out to the office early yeah. I ra ran up and down the office celebrating. Then I went back and looked at the email. I'm like, are you sure? And then the yeah. email said, respond to us and tell us if you're interested. So I replied, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm interested. Yeah. The rest <laughs> yeah. of the day, I kept, yeah. I kept checking. Did I really re send this email? Did I send yeah. this email? Did they know, they know that I'm interested? <laughs> so, yeah. But again, being a Kenyan, right. we, we, we've been finessed a lot. We've been conned yeah. a lot. So I'm like, Ish. but this yeah, is too good. Yeah, yeah. This seems to be too good to be true. You're telling me you're going to buy my air ticket, you're going to pay my school fees, and you're going to give me a monthly stipend. All I need to do is show up and study. Right. What's the catch? What's the yeah. catch? So for the for the next two months, getting everything in order, and I remember getting an email because my first stop was the UK, University okay. of Plymouth. Yeah. I was calling it Plymouth, but I was told, no, 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 it's Plymouth. Please. Yeah. Please. Okay. So I get the email and they're telling me, okay, uh, get your visa. So here's the option. Either we give you, we buy your ticket for you and right. deduct it from your mobility fund, or you buy the ticket and you get all the money. I'm like, eh, again, yeah. still skeptical. I'm like, mm, something is buy me something. the ticket. Yeah. Buy me the ticket. This is going to be the proof that <laughs> this is actually happening. Buy me the ticket. Yeah. In three days. Yes. First of all, they reply and say, what, what, what airport are you flying out of? Right. GKIA. Yeah. Within three days, I'm getting a ticket in my inbox. Wow. I'm like, okay, so so this is really happening. 
So yeah. this is really happening. So that, I think that's the long and short of it. Right. That's wow. Of it. So yeah, it is I just mean... several circumstances. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. I elected to go to see somebody. And, and that's one of the reasons I like visiting universities and talking to people about exactly. this program. Because yeah. if I hadn't, if the lady hadn't reached out, I would have never heard of this program. Maybe I would have, but chances are very low. But yeah. so that's why I like going back and talking to students about this. So maybe one day, even if two or one person gets the information from me and applies yeah. and gets it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And guys, if you're listening to us and you're wondering what is Erasmus about, and uh, you know you want to possibly shoot your shot like Paul Nelias did here, um, Erasmus is actually a European Union funded program whereby you can come and study your joint master's degree. You can actually also uh, take advantage of other funding opportunities that are open now. And you can check this on the catalog. I'm going to post a comment down below uh, on this video where you can actually browse through the catalog if you're interested to go ahead and pursue your master's. It's fully funded and you get to go to at least, to the very least, two countries right now for the mobility that you choose, obviously. So it depends on the course that you're interested in doing, the field that you're interested in actually doing. And in most cases, you do not necessarily have to have had, um, you know, a background of, of, say, for example, you see a business course and you've been working in business and maybe you did an IT degree in your university, you can go ahead and shoot your shot as long as you show that your experience actually is enough for you to study that degree. So I will leave that catalog. There's a lot we can say about Erasmus. We preach yeah. about it <laughs> as Erasmus alumni, but this today is not about, um, you know, how to apply for Erasmus. It's about yeah. what, <laughs> and what he actually uh, was able to achieve even after Erasmus. So you um, get your ticket and then you're like, okay, it's about time to, to pack my bags. And so what happen, happens next after that? After the skepticism is over. <laughs> so um, at this time, I, I maybe I forgot to mention I'm flat broke. Okay. Like I have <laughs> You're an intern broke. anyway. Yeah. I am an intern. No, my by this time my intern, my internship ended in April. So I think I got the email on April 24th. I'll never forget that day. April 24th, 2009. My yeah. internship ended on April 30th. Yeah. So from May 1st till September. Okay. I'm just I'm just hanging around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um I think I remember one of Saturday yeah. when when the when the my, my departure date was approaching, okay. isn't it actually something that I'm I've never left Kenya before, I've never been outside before, I've never left home before. Okay, yeah. I, I was living in KU, but that doesn't really count because I was at home every <laughs> Saturday. That doesn't really count. Actually, yeah. I think even had a panic attack. A yeah. minor, minor panic attack, like oh my god, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. So get uh get my ticket, I'm flying through Dubai. Okay. First airport I ever see other than JKI is Dubai. Yeah, I remember right. going to, walking through the airport and seeing a Lamborghini and yeah. getting to a to a coin box to call one of, one of my closest friends, one of my oldest friends, Eric, yeah. to tell him, yo, I've seen Lamborghini. You see those things we see on TV? Yeah. yeah I've really? just seen it in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> get to the UK. Let yeah. me tell you, it was, it was, an, uh, it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, the first five months was in the UK, so we had a uh, British visa, so it was a bit restrictive. And then I moved from my mobility to Spain. Right. With a Schengen visa, now life begins. First yeah. of all, in the UK, education, the system is so strict. Yeah. I think I used, to, I used to spend most of my time studying. Okay. We used to leave the, we used to leave the library at 2 in the morning and have to be class, back in class by 9. So oh, there's wow. very little time for a, for a social life. But in Spain, yeah. it's now chill. It's more relaxed. The yeah. weather is better. We have Schengen visas now. Yeah. We are traveling. We are traveling. We are enjoying we're enjoying the European experience. We are, we are, we are, we are seeing Europe. Yes. Um, towards the end of my, of my master's, two things happened. Okay. My, the consortium that has, that was, that was hosting my program okay. applied for and get a PhD program. Yeah. Number two, I realized in as much as I want to come back to Kenya permanently, I'm not yet ready. Okay. okay. My, I, I'm, I'm not yet scratched no, by my one last each. <laughs> I, I still feel like I still yeah. feel like living this experience. Yeah. So I started looking for PhDs. I started looking for ways to stay in Europe a bit longer. Not permanently, so I'm not really looking for jobs. I'm applying for jobs in Kenya, but yeah. I'm looking for opportunities for PhDs. Yeah. And then when, when they tell us, oh, we have we've applied, we have done this thing, we have we've 
we set the program you guys are welcome to apply hey i said like, okay fine let me apply for it yeah and since uh the deadline is actually before i graduate from my masters but they know me they they have my transcripts blah 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 yeah around now this is 2011 right around june june uh, yeah in june we get an email saying ah okay people have been selected you've been put on the waiting list meaning i can join the program if i sponsor myself again yeah. i don't have that money right in august when the program is about to start their program is about to start i get another email telling me oh some one of the people who was accepted dropped out and you're on the waiting list so Okay. You're one of the three people on the waiting list. Tell me if you want to join the program again, wow. very fast. Yeah. You, you, yeah. me, yeah. I want Quick. again. Remember, yeah. no, I didn't want to study at yeah. all. I was done with my with my undergrad. I was done. Yeah. Now, now here I am going to do to, to do a PhD. Yes, to more education. Yes. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I, I, it's crazy. Okay. So, um, because of the delay, because. The, the, the the program was starting in September of 2011, and I was being told in 20 in to, uh, in August. And now, when you go to do your PhD, it's no longer you're no longer going as a student; you're going as a worker. Right. You're basically, going as a fellow. So the fellow, this the the um, the visa is different. Yeah. And because the visa is different, it takes a longer period. So I had to stay and do all this. Like it took me months for the visa to be sorted out. So I got right. back to Europe in January of 2012. Okay. Three months after the rest of the of the, of the guys have been there. So. Okay. Now this is also an Erasmus, also an Erasmus PhD. Okay. Okay. Yes. Three years now. This time I start in, in Spain and move to Italy. Okay. Yo, let me tell you. Yes. You need to be mentally prepared to do a PhD, and I think <laughs> I wasn't mentally prepared. And I, I I blame a cousin of mine who, when I was going to do my PhD, she was she was finishing a PhD and she right. didn't tell me what it takes to do a PhD. Yes. She didn't tell me so. I was. I think I was too excited about the about the opportunity. I didn't realize yeah. that the, the work that has to be put in. I, right. I I joke about this, but it, I'm it, I'm only half joking. Every week I used to quit the PhD. Yeah. I used to think yeah. if I just left here and went back home, <laughs> go back to my to my and help my mother on her farm. Yeah. Where would they find me? Because the yeah. biggest problem is they've given they've invested money in me. Yes. If I don't finish the work back, they invest me. <laughs> so if you just if I just run away, if I just yeah. run away, where would they find me? Would they be able, once you get to JKIA, which direction do they know I've gone? But you but, send hey, a contract. <laughs> yes, send I've a signed contract. a contract. So yeah, my problem is that I've signed a contract, so I'm trying to yeah. find a way to get out of right. the contract because yeah, it, was a yeah. lot, it was a lot. So, okay. But I think about a year before my PhD was over, okay. I, was, I, was done, I, was, I was done with my, with my, with my gallivanting in Europe. Right. I'm like yeah, now now and now I'm ready to go back home. Yeah. Now I'm ready to go back home. Okay. Um, so by the time I was finishing, I knew very well. I knew that I graduate when I graduate. Yeah, I'm hoping on to apply for coming back to Kenya. And, right. the, and, and, and at the same time, when I was graduating in, um, Europe was going through a was going through the was going through a transition where a lot they the the there's a there's an economic crisis, so there are yeah. not a lot of jobs. I remember the year I was graduating was the time when Greece. I was was almost going under receivership, quote right. unquote. It yeah. was it was not a good time, yeah. and so the job opportunities were not their best. They're not they're not so many. Yeah. Um. Then again, I'm living in that time. I've gone back to Spain, so my Spanish is passable. Like I can say hi, I can ask someone for sugar, but like I'm not going to be able to. Yeah. Yes, I'm not going to be able to use my Spanish in a in a professional in a professional setting. So, right. Um. I I decided to come back home. Okay. Came back home with my PhD with all the arrogance there is in the world. <laughs> you need to be I'm called not... doctor. I should have called you Dr. Cornelius Okello. First, the... first of all, yes, put some respect on that doctor. First of all. <laughs> Second yeah. of all, there are so many universities in Kenya that are understaffed. They need PhDs. I mean, I think the statistic is saying we only have 27,000 PhD holders in, in Kenya. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. This is me. I'm here. Yeah. Throw me the job offers. Yes. Nothing. And then <laughs> life said, hold my beer. Yes. This is Kenya. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was I came back in January of 2016. Okay. I spent the whole of 2016 doing the work of looking for work. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the Kenya dream. That's true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and but at that time I was not only looking for I was not only looking for work in Kenya, by the way. I was I was casting my net. As wide yeah. as possible. Anyway, as long as you can have me. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, I was looking in Kenya, right. but after after two three months, I realized, Ish, I'm I'm restricting myself. 
Yeah. Um, so I started looking elsewhere. I think in that year alone, I, I must have sent over 110 job applications. I still have that folder. I still oh, have wow. that folder. It, 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 it reminds me of where, where I came from. Yeah. But by, I mean, by, before, by, you, before you went to Kenya, mm. <laughs> before you went to Kenya, what, you know, what was the thought process? Because now you're transitioning from being in Europe. I mean, by then you'd already finished your studies. You are, your mind was set to go back to Kenya. But what was your thought process? Like you're going to Kenya, go look for a job. Do you even know where you're going to go look for that job? What was your thought process before you left? So? <laughs> My thought process was, first of all, when you do the Erasmus program, you move around a lot. Yeah. So I started feeling like an, a ship without an anchor. So it, I, my thought process was come back to Kenya, mm. set up roots. Because okay. when I left when I left Kenya to do my studies, I was yeah. living with my folk. So okay. when I left, they basically, they, this, wait, this one has moved out. So yeah. I didn't have a home. Whenever okay. I'd visit, and even if I would stay at their place, I'd yeah. live out of my suitcase. <laughs> I'd live out of my suitcase. <laughs> basically, yeah. I don't have a place to even put my clothes, you know. Right. So yeah, yeah. I didn't have a place that I could call home. Okay. Um, and I and and uh, by the time I was leaving, when I was coming back to Kenya with a PhD in my field, especially I don't right. know about other fields, but especially in my field, okay. um, with a PhD, the limitation is either you go into a research institution or you go to academia. Right. Um, if you and go into the, the job, if, yeah. What? Sorry. What is the name of your PhD? Just so that anyone. Oh, knows. Yeah. Ah, uh, my PhD was called. Uh, Marine and Coastal Management it was called uh, Marasmus Mundas Joint Doctorate in uh, Marine and Coastal Management. Okay. Um, it's now moved to the Marie Curie. I'm not sure if it still has the same name. Yeah. Um, so it's environmental. Right. So it's either you're setting up your own company, you're going into academia, or you're going into research, right. either a research institute or an academic institute. Uh, yeah. Industry um, do not care about PhDs. They care about experience. That's true. And I've been a, by this point, I've been a career, I've been a career student. Yeah. So <laughs> there's not much market experience. So exactly. I kinda it kind of res restricted my options to some to some extent. Yeah. Um, and so I looked at it and thought, okay, my best bet is going to academia. So again, again, as I said again, there was a demand in the market because no, there are not so many lecturers. I'm, a lot of universities still depend on part-time lecturers to fill okay. up the gap. Right. And they have the expertise, so it's it, it seemed and it seemed a match made in heaven. Yeah, but I mean, you yeah. teaching how, you know? Like, Again, growing up, I said I hated school. I also didn't like teachers, and I'm like, so. But that means I have to stand in front of people and teach. But now I have a background in acting. I've acted professionally before, so okay. standing in front of people was not a big deal. But I'm like, being a teacher, yeah. being a yeah. teacher. Now I'm looking for. Post, I was looking for post for, for, for postdoc uh, research projects, early researchers, blah blah blah. Okay. <sighs> now, uh, as a last resort, now I start sending out to universities, blah blah blah. Yeah. And you, academia is, is the fish that beats the bait. Very true. And that was the one that beats the bait. So I eventually got a position as a part time lecturer to begin with. Yeah. So I said I got a part time lecture position in Machakos University. Okay. And then coincidentally, two weeks later, I got another one in Technical University of Mombasa. So now <laughs> this was my life. <laughs> At yeah. Yeah. This university on Tuesday as a part-timer. Right. Go to my, go back to Nairobi. Yeah. At night, I take my I take a nine o'clock bus, modern coast. Yes. To Mombasa. Okay. Get to Mombasa on Wednesday morning, prepare for class in the during the day. Thursday, wow. I'm I'm in class in Technical University of Mombasa, and I'm doing it in the Ukunda campus, not even the one near the town where I have to go through Diani, I have to go all the way down. Oh wow! Have the class and then come back, take the evening back bus back to Nairobi. If I'm oh. too tired, then I'll stay I'll stay on Friday and then come back with the Friday night bus. But most of it's Thursday, so that was my life for for about four months. And then right. Machakos University went on break. So yeah. I got another position at Pwani. So I just moved to Mombasa. So I was going Pwani, Mombasa. Pwani right. University, Mombasa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then that, That's quite a lot. I, I really just want to give a quick <laughs> break. <laughs> Honestly, guys, if you're listening to us, uh, we are talking about transitioning from being an Erasmus student um, and maybe thinking about doing a PhD 
uh, going into work, maybe beginning a new project, um, if, if at all that is what you would like to do. And these are things that, you know, we rarely talk about. And in fact, um, the thing is, um, when you study abroad, when you live the life abroad, whether you're studying a master's, whether you're doing a PhD, whether it's just a short mobility, there's always the thought process of what next after this. So this is what we are talking about here because it's not just about getting that opportunity and you know getting out of Kenya and out of the problems or problem setting or the problem thought process that you have in Kenya and coming here and solving your problems and never having them later. Really, there's a lot that comes about, um, you know, when you finish your, your studies abroad, whether that's in Europe, whether that's Australia, whether that is in the US, it doesn't really matter. So if you're listening to this, please um, interact with us on the comment section. I do see already that we have quite um, some two comments here. So you can interact with us on the comment section. Let us know whether you have any questions concerning Erasmus. Um, like Cornelius mentioned here that he studied his um, PhD via an Erasmus uh, joint uh, doctorate program, which is no longer uh, there anymore. But if you're interested in actually applying for a doctorate program, you can um, go to the website. I always talk about this on this channel. It's the Euraxis website where you can be able to find European funded programs, whether that is under Marie Curie, like Cornelius program uh, or Horizon 2020. We have several other um, programs on that website that you can be able to see, which are funded, fully funded actually by the EU and you actually um, can apply for this as a job and your visa is going to be very different these are things that we can talk about later about the logistics but the discussion is getting um really really good and cornelius is just about to tell us more about his uh journey now after the four months so after the four months you are you know you've been going back and forth nairobi coasts I don't know. You never had any life, really, but it was it was paying off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, paying off. Yeah. Let people tell you the experiences of part-time lecturers and being paid. Anyway, yeah. uh, at that time, uh, uh, this is where the Erasmus program. But I think I don't know. It's 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 godsend because yeah. When I was in, in the Erasmus program, I was part of Emma, the Erasmus Munda Students and, and Alumni Association, very active. And we used to have many events, and we used to have some some events in Kenya, blah blah blah. So I I, I made some connections with with colleagues of mine who we met in Europe, yeah. and five of us who are from the same program per se, we in different years, but we all did the same program, either the master's program or the, or the PhD program. Actually, yeah. came together and and formed Eracoma that I was talking about this consultancy firm. Right. So. Yeah. At that time, because I was the one who was jobless, I did a lot of the legwork with the registration, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so um, we started now applying for, for funding for, for projects. We would sit down. Okay. Anybody has a project idea, tell us yeah. what your project idea is. We develop it. Uh, we yeah. help you where you can, etc., right. etc. Uh, because we're all passionate about research, about marine and coastal environment issues. Yeah. Um, okay. We have got different expertise. Uh, yeah. Some people are interested in in turtles, for example, somebody interested in ecosystem services. Um, yeah. So we wrote this project proposal and I was just fortunate because the idea was mostly about to do with uh, water, water issues. Yeah. So okay. I was fronted as the, as the lead and then we applied for National Geographic funding. One of, one of, the, one of the funders of the, of the company told us about, she was in a meeting and he met somebody from National Geographic and told them about the opportunities. So we applied for it. Yeah. Now this is, a, this is in 2017. Yes. 2016, 2017, lo and behold, we get funding. Wow. So now, um, this time I don't, I still don't have a job. I'm just part-timing here and there, just traveling between Nairobi and um, oh. and Nairobi, Machakos, Mombasa, GTC. So again, yeah. National Geographic funding, which is, it's one, it's, an, it's a very amazing funder. Like it's one of the best funders you can, you can ever get. Right. Very supportive. Even after you've, they tell you once you're an explorer, Okay. you're an explorer for life even if you got one grant you're an explorer for life so they give a lot of support um so between 2017 2018 that was a lot of what we were, uh, that was a lot of my focus i was doing a lot of research on this project because we we're collecting data collecting data every month now towards the end of 2017 yeah i finally get called by machakos university interview for a yeah. full-time job okay. um 
I'll never forget this because, first of all, we'll have the, 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 the conversation about how dramatic the day of my interview was. But after <laughs> the interview, I yeah. was I was interviewed right before the lunch break. And then, because we, we were all being served lunch, yeah. um, one of the panelists during yeah. the interview okay. approached him and asked me, oh, so you, do the, you did the Erasmus program? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you need to be in my office tomorrow. Okay. And like, but How? I don't even know whether I have the job or not. Why? Why am I coming to your office? And this is a this is a senior senior member of the Machakos University fraternity. So okay. the next time in his office, and he's telling me, "Yeah, we've been trying to get into the Erasmus uh, program because they, we have got the Erasmus Plus thing now." And it's like, right. since you've been in the in the process, then yeah. I think then you can help us along. I'm like, oh, okay. So two weeks later, I get the job, and I'm like, hey, maybe I got this job because of because of this Erasmus connection. Yeah. There's a possibility for this job because of this Erasmus connection. So, um, yeah. so from 2018, I've been doing this. I've been in Machakos University as a lecturer um, yeah. for about three, almost four years. I was the chairman of the Department of Environmental Sciences. Wow. Um, then last year, um, I got Wanderlust again. <laughs> 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 I, I got my roots, my, my roots are established. Now at least I can travel and come back. I don't have to leave out of a suitcase anymore. So, I, yeah. so I've been looking for opportunities here and there. Um, okay. Came across this uh, opportunity in the University of Cape Town through yeah. the African Research Universities Alliance. It's okay. been fun, funded by the Senna Gives Foundation. So yeah. they give me a fellowship to do the research. Okay. I, I want it's a, it's a proposal that I've written and been trying to get funding for, but never yeah. got it. Yeah. And then the 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 fellowship was only supposed to take care of my upkeep. Yes. But my the way my project is set up, it's got a lot of field work. Right. So I had to now go back again to the drawing board and start looking for money for 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 field work. Going to Lamu is not cheap. Yeah, going to Lamu yeah. is not cheap. And nowadays, especially when you know everybody is going to Lamu for for yes. Days. Like, especially yeah. now that Lamu has become every everybody wants to go there. So, and then again, I I applied for another National Geographic fund. Okay. And at the uh, to March this year, they they gave it to me. So actually, I'm back in Kenya because of, of field work. I'm 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 based in South Africa, but okay. I have to travel quite a bit because of because of field work. Now, yes. between 2018 <laughs> and 2022. Yeah. I have applied for three other National Geographic funds <laughs> and not yeah. gotten them. I'm okay. saying this because yeah, um, a, a lot of I've seen this a lot of times uh, with many people. They apply for a funding or a program and they don't get it. And the time they don't get it, they give up. They're like, ah, that's not for me, and they keep it pushing. I I find that if you truly believe in something, if you really are passionate about something, you try again. I think yeah. these are there's a very famous quote that that guides my life try again fail again fail better right that's very true and i think obviously because of the emotional investment that everybody gets um and you know just because you you think that this is definitely it has to be for you so you know you you invest a lot emotionally and you know you think that for sure for sure i have to get in and if you don't get in then you become very discouraged i've met quite yeah. a number of people especially with erasmus uh, people keep trying once twice thrice and you know they're like okay this is not happening i'm just gonna give up altogether but i keep telling people that you know even with the erasmus alumni lots of the people including me had to apply once twice thrice Four times and right now i mean we we have a very good um structure of erasmus whereby you can actually apply for even more than three programs it's, it's no longer oh, okay. just a program so you know um starting this year you can definitely shoot your shot for as many programs as you actually can fit into depending on your experiences your background and of course showing that for sure for sure you can be a good candidate for this program so Things are changing, which is very, very good. I mean, over the years, Erasmus has been restructuring um, here and there. So, guys, if you're listening to this and you're feeling discouraged just because, you know, you never got that opportunity, shoot your shot again. Keep shooting until you get it, honestly. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, think, um, <laughs> I think the approach I take when I'm applying for funding uh, or even for Erasmus is that um, I'm not the only qualified person. Right. So it's not mine. Yes, it's not. It's it's not mine to lose. Yeah. It's mine to win, yeah. and yeah. that way I don't personalize any any dis any negative feedback. In fact, I um my partner always laughs at this because I say I I I get into 
into these situations with the assumption that I'm not going to, I'm not going to get it. Yeah. But that doesn't stop me from applying. I just say, no, okay, fine. Yeah. Um, it's not geo, for example. How many people are going to apply for not geo for oh, a single maybe. grant? Yeah. And this is this is from, from all over the world, so it's probably going to be conservatively speaking, 10,000 people for the yeah. same thing. True. So what what why me and why me and not everyone else or, or yeah. anyone you know, else? So it doesn't discourage me from doing it, I just do it with that mentality so that I can keep trying. I can yeah. keep trying. Try again, fail again, fail better. Get feedback from them, especially. And I, I think this, this is one of the things I've also learned that helps a lot is when you apply and you get a rejection letter, ask yeah. for feedback. Yeah. Ask ask the the, the, the the body that has um that has that, that is making the decision. Why yeah. why didn't you pick me? Is right. what, what 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 about my application? Didn't you like? What did you like? What can I change? And exactly. then you can you can um edit it. You can you can panel beat it and then submit it when it's when it's yeah. when it's better looking. Absolutely. Very good point you make there. And especially for Kenyans who are listening to this, of course, we want more numbers for Erasmus because this is something that we've been talking about even in the background with you and the rest of the alumni community uh, in Kenya because we still do not have the right numbers. We are very few. We have 13 people, 10 people coming in to do their Erasmus. Really, we do need more people. And please don't be skeptic like Cornelius was before. <laughs> it works for me. I mean, it works for me. <laughs> Um, Cornelius and myself, we've gone through the program, so it's very legitimate. So you do not have to be very skeptical about things when you see it online and you see that they are going to cover A, B, C, D, E. Yes, it's fully funded, 100%. They'll give you stipend money and they will give you, um, now it's going to be 1,400 euros for the new programs, obviously. Oh. So um, things are changing. Like I said before, before we used to have 3,000, um, you know, in in, in travel cost and also a thousand in installation uh, costs as well as a thousand in stipend money every every other month but now things will change uh, starting the next cohort it will it's actually not going to be called cohort anymore so uh, starting from the next uh, participants it will be 1400 euros per month for the new programs that have been accept accepted for the year 2021 to 2027 so this is a very very good time for you to actually apply for erasmus because um it's, it's becoming more inclusive and in fact if you um have some sort of issues with the, the location maybe you have an issue with your visa and you have to study maybe online maybe study in, in a different country they can accommodate that however it is definitely case by cases a uh, case by case basis so um you know the thing is um this is a program that can set you apart just like Dr. Cornelius here says that this is a program that actually paved his way and he never even thought about it even before. So um, again, if you're listening to this and you have any questions about it, please um, make sure that you can um, ask them on the comment section. We are going to get into that very shortly. But I just want to ask you, so do you think that now that you've been in academia, do you think industry or academia is better? Which is which? Do, do, do you think that academia is better for you, maybe, or? <laughs> that's, <what? laughs> that's a very hard question to answer. I don't think either or. I don't think it's an either or thing. I think it's very preferential. It depends yeah. on what you want to achieve in your life. What do you want to do? Um, right. And what your strengths and your weaknesses are. Um, yeah. There's a role for everybody. We need teachers as much as we need CEOs. We need okay. lecturers as much as we need um bureaucrats so it really does depend i think the easiest thing to say is just let your heart guide you yeah let what 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 makes you happy what makes you get out of bed every morning what makes you excited that let that guide you for me i picked academia because it gave me the chance to explore research which is what i'm really passionate about right. um it gave me a platform because a lot of times in research it's hard for you to just apply for research as yourself yeah. and then who is who is okello why That's should true. i give you money yeah. but if i wrote on the paper and said okello from machakos university okello yeah. from eracoma it, yeah. it 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 greases the wheels it greases the wheels i'm not saying that's the only reason you should do an academia i'm just saying this is one of the parks of being in academia okay. so if you want to do research you yeah. you you want to be attached to an institution it might be a research institution it might right. be an academic institution at the same time when you're attached to such an institution then you have 
mentors. You have people who can show you the ropes. Okay. You can have people who've been there and done that and learn from them. Yeah. Because learning doesn't it end. It can also happen in industry, though. You can also get a mentor. Yeah, but okay. yes, it can. That's I said, it depends on what it depends on what yeah. what you want to do. Right. Um, it's the same. I, I think for me, I think a, a good example could be industry in, in terms of consultancy as right. opposed to doing being a, being a career researcher. Consultancies, right. um, and this is not disparaging in any way, is more yeah. like parachute research. You get because you're given three months to understand something. So you exactly. get in there, yeah, and you're supposed to come up with a report after three months. But right. um for, for you to make an impact in the scientific community, for me, um I'm a scientist. I want I want to change the world through my science. Yeah. It takes a longer time for you to understand that. Now, right. consultancies has a lot of money, yeah. but research doesn't have a lot of money, but it's impactful. So again, it depends on what you what you want to do. If you want to make money, yeah. industry is 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 is, is there. Yeah. Um, and do you think you want... the ceiling in Kenya, like in Kenya, you know, there's a big disparity between the two fields, really, because you know. Um, if you go to into academia, maybe you will not get as much quote unquote money, obviously, <laughs> than than the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think in Kenya, like that can suffice for someone who studied abroad and is thinking of coming back to Kenya? Really? Do you think that maybe they should, you know, should yes. first in an industry or academia first? Again, I I don't I don't I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to. To uh to let my experiences influence people's decisions, I think you should okay. make your own decision because it's it's not it's it's not it's not a zero sum game. It's okay. not a zero sum. It, it's it's really a, a, about desire. Yeah. In academia, you can actually make money. Okay. I can give you tips on how to make money. The, the salary <laughs> might not be the best, yeah. but you can make money in research. Okay. Like it, actually, this is a better way. You can be in academia and industry at the same time because when you're right. in academia. Um, one of the things you have to do as an academic is carry out research. Your job is not just right. to teach. You yeah. have to carry out research because right. you, what you're doing is, we're not trained teachers. We are yeah. giving we are giving students at a tertiary level our yeah. experiences. Okay. Right? So if you're yeah. not doing out the research, then you have no experiences to pass on to them. Yeah. So you can actually be an academic while being in industry. And a lot of people do that. A lot okay. of people do that. They actually, in industry, while at the same time they're in academia. You find actually people who are who, who are primarily in industry yes. moonlighting as part-time lecturers. True. Okay. At the same time. So yes. it again, for me, I think what would guide your choice is availability of opportunities, definitely is one of them, but also yes. what gets you out of bed. Right. Do you want do you do you want to change the world? Do you want to carry out research? Do you want to right. teach? Do you okay. want to be a consultant? What do yes. you want to do? So yeah. it's not it's not an either or answer. Absolutely. Okay, fair enough. But I, I would imagine that Erasmus actually gives you a platform uh, good enough for you to make this decision whether you want to go back into industry or uh, you know academia back in Kenya or even in Europe, really, because I think mm -hmm. uh, the drill the you know like you mentioned before when you were in the UK you used to study a lot. So the drill to to be you know in the in the library studying a lot, maybe analyzing a lot of journals. For me, that was the thing. Like we would analyze journals and journals, endless journals every other single week. It doesn't stop, um, and and mm. and that's the drill in Europe, really. So like it it prepares you for that, and also we had an exposure to towards what happens in the industry. Like we would go, for example, in my case, we used to go to the hospitals and and see what exactly happens in their health facilities to see whether we can be able to learn something and grasp grasp mm. something from that. And maybe that would help us in the future whenever, you know, depending on whether you want to go back to your own country and, and, and continue on the job you had or maybe start a whole new project. I think Erasmus gives you both ways. I think so. Yeah. And in fact, gives you both ways in different countries. So you, you mm, get to know, yeah. you know what happens in each and every one of these countries. So I think it's quite balanced. We can say that. Right? Yeah. I, I yeah. think for me, for me, what what uh, actually what you're saying is 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 absolutely right because if I give an example of of my, my Spanish experience during my masters, we yeah. were basically having courses or units, whatever word you want to use, that would last a week. Yeah. So you'd have you'd have a lecturer coming in for five days and right. giving you his his material, and they'd yeah. come from different parts of the world. Some of them were career academics. Some of them were from directly from industry. So you yeah. get to see and understand 
both parts and it would help you it would actually help you make an informed decision right okay yeah. absolutely agreed and I, I think i think that is a good place to agree on so guys if you're yeah. looking into going into a, an erasmus program really you will get the great great benefit of it from you know you'll be able to understand exactly where you want to do what where, what you want to do in the future where you want to be whether you want to be in academia research um you, your own projects your own startup whatever it is depending on your field and what gets you out of bed that's a very good point so um you, you're able to learn your passion and you're able to even interact with people in a way that you would never have expected before and meet new cultures and you know what um it it is a whole departure from all the prejudices you might be having about other cultures you learn a lot in fact from these other cultures uh, because again in, in a classroom you might be maybe 10 10 to 15 uh, different nationalities or even 5 to 10 depending on the program obviously and so you get to learn a lot even from your peers in the classroom so um again we cannot preach enough about erasmus mm -hmm. and, and yeah. this is your program this is your program because like dr cornelius mentions here he never used to like classroom but look at him now a whole lecturer, a whole lecturer. it's my life now it's my <laughs> life now <laughs> i didn't like classrooms or teachers <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. So um, now let let me ask you one other question. So uh, based on your experience, would you say it's obviously you mentioned that it's good to have a mentor and 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 you know get mentored through your journey after you know Erasmus and maybe um, during your career process um, in the new age where you know we have tech and and all these kind of things. Would you say that um, I think you know tech plays a, a big, big, big role into into obviously what you do as well? Because like you're in South Africa, you're in Kenya, you need to connect to people and all these kind of things. Would you say something to, towards um, you know going into tech? Because most of the people right now nowadays are like you know what I want to go study um, something in tech and and maybe connected to what I am currently doing. Do you, did you have to do that or not? Or tech is not your thing, or you you are you know those people who are you know old age and all. No, no. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Don't let don't this, let the silver in the beard fool you. I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. I, I think I think I'm tech savvy. I think I I love tech. All right. I really okay. do love tech, and like yeah. one of the things yeah that I really enjoyed about the Erasmus program was I remember. Um, when 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 the UK we got a few we got a, a bunch of classes, and I was like, why aren't we taught these things in Kenya in undergrad? Like research skills, presentation skills, and part of that experience was learning a lot about the innovations that are being done out there that can help you in the field. Yeah. Like programs, like we, I was taught GIS, uh, Global Informatic Systems, Geographic Informatic Systems, but mine was taught theoretically. Okay. But oh, it's wow. this an important tool that is need. Like we were just being taught in class, not sitting in front of a computer. Then I'm, right. I'm being taught the same thing in Spain, where yeah. everybody has their own computer, so, and you you yeah. you you're being taught while you while you're doing it. And yeah. these are things that are helping me today. Yeah. Um, and tech, uh, listen, especially yeah. and COVID showed showed us the importance of tech. Yes, COVID really showed us the importance of tech. Yeah. Um, I've what I'm doing right now in my research yeah. is. Something I've never done before. I've, I've always been a lab rat. I yeah. go and collect water samples and I measure them, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. I'm, I'm trying to look at the human part of it. So I'm, okay. I'm doing questionnaires. Yes. What do people need to do with questionnaires? You fill out, you, you design your questionnaire, you print it out, you give photocopy, give, give your arrays. Yes. They go out, they fill out with pens and papers, come back. You have to do the, you have to hire somebody else to do data entry. It's a lot. Yeah. And then comes all this data collection tools that yeah. some of them are free, like Kobo Toolbox, where you basically design your questionnaire okay. on your computer, yes. deploy, your, yeah. your arrays, all they need to do is download it onto their phone. They don't even need to have the internet on. They okay. go, they fill out the things, save it on their phone. When they're yeah. in the internet, they upload it. You don't have to do so. It, it, it cuts out so many steps. Okay. And it's revolutionized how, we do, how we're doing research out there. It's okay. cut down the time it takes to do research by... Yeah almost three quarters so okay. tech it's a must, yo, it's, it's, a a must. must. it's a must I, I don't i'm trying to see any field where tech is not a must yeah. like it is yes 
So, I mean, mm. for, for someone who is listening to you and is, is thinking of, of, of you know, um, transitioning or even coming to even study uh, abroad, then tech is something that they have to think about in their career. How mm. to marry tech into whatever else they are doing, whether it's communication, business, whatever it is, really, um, you have to marry tech and, and, and get married to it for real. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. find a way to integrate tech to take advantage you know yeah. we're not asking you we're not you're not being asked to create anything new you're yeah. just being asked to utilize familiarize with yourself with what is out there in your yeah. field of study and yeah. then make it work for you yes absolutely so the reason why i'm actually even asking you about tech is because uh, erasmus moving forward is going to be very more much 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 more digital than it actually used to be so mm. this is something that um you know if you're thinking about erasmus this is something that you also need to um incorporate in in your thought process because um they're gonna need you to be very very um mobile one because that is a culture of, of erasmus moving around very um to various countries two to three countries or even four depending and um you know there's there's the aspect of digital digital education that is going to be incorporated a lot moving forward so uh, these are things that you need to think about uh, ahead of time and then right. now i just want to go ahead and ask you something else before we can can um, dwell, delve into the questions here so if someone is thinking about a phd and they are wondering so how do i get started for you, it was somewhat easy because you just applied because of your alma mater in Spain, I, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And so it was sort of kind of easy. But nowadays, obviously, like you, you had mentioned before, is that uh, when you apply for a program, say, for example, in the UK, they will tell you, OK, yes, we will admit you, but you need to bring your own funding. And before you can do that process of, of even applying for that PhD, you need to approach a supervisor and introduce yourself. Let them know, hey, I'm here. I want to study a PhD. Why me? You know, introduce yourself. So what we call, quote, unquote, cold emailing, which is something perhaps yourself also has, you have experienced in, in the university when teaching, uh, because maybe there are PhD students who would like to, you know, be supervised. And um, they're looking towards getting a potential supervisor. So can you give some some pointers here and there about cold emailing and introducing yourself to a lecturer, a potential lecturer abroad. Because I mean, in Kenya, I can easily come to you and speak to you and tell you, hey, you know what? Uh, can we strike a deal? Yeah. <laughs> a supervisor. But uh, I mean, this is something that you're doing on an email. You are introducing mm. yourself to a supervisor. You are asking them that, hey, can you supervise me? Maybe can I go into your research group? Perhaps maybe um, can can I get into the funding that you already have? I see you've been doing this and this research. It's very congruent to what exactly I'm trying to do in my own uh, research, ETC. And so you introduce yourself in an email. And obviously, this lecturer needs to possibly hope and pray that they read this email and they are very much into what you're doing and they will accept it. So can you give some pointers maybe if, if you're privy to that? I think the only advice I can give is approach it like a like, like a job application. Okay. The way you'd apply for a job is the yeah. same way you'd apply for it because this person doesn't know you. Okay. Um, and everything they need to know about you is going to be in that one single email. So yeah. you have to you have to um introduce yourself. First of yeah. all, no SMS language. No okay. SMS like I, I it's it's what sad that I have to point out. <laughs> no text language, no you are no okay seriously though look yeah. at it like like you're applying for a job you introduce yourself yeah. um give your credentials yes um give your credentials this is okay. who i am this is what i have done so far yeah. and then why are you why are you interested in he or in this particular supervisor yeah. why him why her why no one else yeah. so this is about now you, you've done your homework right this motokelo works with 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 water in in, in marine and uh, coastal environments this is yeah. what i'm interested in doing yes this is why i think we're a, be we're a better fit if you've got a project idea tell them your project idea so basically yeah. you're selling yourself you're telling them this right. is who i am yeah. this is why I, i've chosen you this is yeah. how i fit in your work okay yes right so again just just look at it like a like a job interview what would you a job application what would you do in a job application 
right without putting in the the the, the my uh, the interests and hobbies that i like football and swimming uh, mm -hmm. but um just think about it in that sense and then um i have had to do that a, a, a lot of times there are quite a number of postdocs specifically that would have we have got funding uh, right. but we want you to be attached i've seen that in german institutions and I've, i i i did that with the with uh, university of florida yeah. um i was very lucky that the unit that, that the lecturer actually the the professor there responded but what yeah. i did was okay. i attached my proposal i okay. told him i am applying for this funding yeah. this funding says i need to be supervised by somebody here i've read your profile i see this is your area of expertise this is what um, I think you can add a uh, value to my to my pro proposal. This yeah. is my proposal. This is what I, I propose to work on when I'm doing the, the, the postdoc. Um, yeah. Then from there on, I am open to suggestions for my proposal. Okay. What what? How can I make it stronger? How? Yeah. What are the issues that I can deal with? What can be done? What can't be done? Because a lot of times, especially when you write your first proposal, it's it's almost like a wish list. Yes. Yeah. You're okay. putting down your idea of what you would like to achieve. Yeah. But then there are things that are achievable. There are things that have probably already been done. So you're right. probably re, um, re, reinventing the wheel and you don't want to do that. So yeah, uh, I think that, that I've said a lot. Said no, I mean, like, it, it, you know what? <laughs> you have said a lot, which is a mouthful about applying for any type of funding. Because you also mm. have been through NatGeo. You've applied even mm. for other different types of funding, even within the EU, really. So this is something yeah. like um, if someone is, is wanting to do that, then this is, they, they need to know that um, you, you have to stipulate pretty much everything and it has to reverberate with what that other person on the other end who is going to read your email, you know, does or researches. So it, it, it's a mouthful, but enough. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I felt like I'd said very many different things. <laughs> yeah, no, so I, I think yeah. the simple the, the simple one is just look at it like a job application. Yeah. Just think about how you get a job application. Right. Introduce yourself. Yeah. Um. Tell them why them. I think that's all very important because it's you're not just you don't you don't just pick the name out of a hat. In yeah. mini mini mono. Why do you want them? And the reason you want them is because their work is linked to your work. Yes. So if, if you've got a proposal already, then you might want to share it at that at, at, at that point and say, this is what I would like to work on. It may not necessarily be a whole proposal, full proposal. It could be a concept note, yes. one pager. Just say, this is my 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 object, my hypothesis, my objectives, my research okay. questions. Yes. These are my potential outcomes. Yes. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and can I ask you, how did you even learn, start, you know, knowing how to apply for funding and you you're in KU you are like okay let's not study anymore <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that you learned when you're in Europe maybe or or Erasmus um you know helped you through that or something of the sort what was you know how did you even begin this it's it's a collection of life experiences I have to say <laughs> like <laughs> from from in, from sitting in classes in Erasmus classes, classes yeah. in Erasmus programs, listening right. to professors talk, we would we would even have discussions with professors outside work. I remember there was a very good, we had a very cool guy called Peter Chapman. Yeah. He passed away, unfortunately. We even invited him over for dinner, like just having conversations. Right. Um, I got a lot of guidance from my supervisors. Okay. I got some very very good supervisors, both for my masters and yeah. for my for my PhD. A lot of them also come from interacting with other. Yeah. with with other with with other researchers okay. one of my cousins is my role model okay i hope she's watching hi nina, <laughs> nina she better because she's yeah. she's the one i told you that she was doing her phd when i was when i was leaving when she was when she was leaving finishing her phd i was starting and she never told so, how difficult yes okay she never told you how difficult the journey was i will never i will never nina. forgive her for that i will never <laughs> forgive her for that yeah so i i I, I go to her a lot a lot, a lot of times to ask for advice. Yeah. Like we we talk. Um and also many times when when I do write proposals, what I like trying to do is sharing with with my colleagues, sharing with people who have been there before for them to critique it. And you don't take you don't take the critique to heart. You just right. um if something doesn't make to, sense to someone, yeah. it doesn't make sense to someone. Yeah. So you have to look at it from from the, the, the reviewer's point. If this person doesn't doesn't make sense to them, then how are you explaining it? Is probably the problem. So you have to make them understand because they might be your reviewer. So yeah, it's 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 not one, 
it's not one thing, but yeah. definitely the Erasmus experience. Yeah. Because it opened so many doors. It opened so many doors and made me interact with so many different people from so many different backgrounds. Yeah. That was definitely a plus. Absolutely. That is so great to hear, honestly, because like, um, I mean, paving your own way in, you know, from, from, from not wanting to actually study to now being the academic here. So, uh, it, it's quite a journey. Honestly, it is quite yeah. a journey. And obviously this is, this is a story that can be told and told and told, and we cannot even <laughs> exhaust it, honestly, because the experiences that you've had one as an Erasmus student, it, it, it was a lot because for the two years and then now doing your doctorate as well, moving from from one country to the other, and that is something that I want you to mention uh, as we move towards the close um, about you know you moving from one country to the other, and maybe the culture shocks that you are able to see by then. <laughs> Adaptation, because again, the education that we know in Kenyatta University, not to say anything wrong with Kenyatta University, it's a great university as well. Um, but the, structure of, the structure of education in Kenyatta University is it's different very different from what you experience in Europe, in any European university, really, in, in, in Europe. So I, I just I, want I, to... I don't, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. Go, I, don't go. It's, 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 I don't even think it's only Kenyatta University alone. It's mm -hmm. even within Erasmus programs, because yeah. you're moving to di two different countries. Uh, yeah. You'll be... You, you, you'll, I'm sure you can you can bear witness to this. Yeah. My example is, from in the UK, very yeah. strict, very structured. In the sense that I remember with my um, acceptance package from the University of Plymouth, there was a one sheet, it was a green sheet that had got examination regulations. Yeah. When you're given an assignment, blah, 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 like you, your, your assignment was, your submission of assignment was tracked to the second. Yeah. And if you were late, it was an automatic fail. You had yeah. to go and, and, and ask for, like, get the dean to sign off and say you are late for this and this reason, for even the, the, the lecturer to look at it. So, oh, wow. and they would scan it, like, they would, they would scan the code of the, of, of, the, of the assignment and scan your ID. And yeah. you get an email telling you you've submitted it at 10, 12, 13 wow. seconds. If the deadline is 12, it's 12. Yeah. And then now you, you get to the department and everybody wants to submit. So it's a mess. And then you go back, then you move to Spain five months later. It's such a chilled, it's such a chilled environment. environment. Hey, yes. Yeah, easy. You like, oh, even have time for social life. Yes. <laughs> deadline is on Friday, but yeah. So it, it, you miss the deadline. There are not such strict repercussions. Exactly. And then you move from, for example, we had got five courses in right. in UK okay. being taught by three. I think some of two to three different lecturers. Yeah. Then you go to Spain where you're supposed to do 15 courses yeah. for the next five months. And then, as I said, every week, yes. you're having you're meeting different lecturers from different backgrounds. So even it itself, it could be considered culture shock because you're seeing two, yes. different, two different education systems, exactly. two different ways of doing the same thing, yet it's the same degree because you're going yes. to get one certificate. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but in terms of culture shock, yeah. I remember when I, when I moved to the UK because they drive on the left side of the road which i insist is the right side to drive for me it was not a problem <laughs> right. you, when you're crossing the road look left look right yes. look left no wait just look right look left look left. right again, right again. And then, cross. Yeah. then my european my european classmates yeah were, were struggling because they drive they on the other side of the road. yeah so they always look on the wrong side of the road and before they cross they're seeing a car coming yeah. So I, I I laughed at them until I moved to Spain and realized that now I was on the <laughs> no, I, so I, was, I had to adapt to <laughs> look left, look right, because the cars are coming from the left side. Like yes. so that was not a struggle, but it was interesting. That was that was an interesting experience. <laughs> okay, but you you adapted into it. Would did you ever yeah. drive there in in Spain or in Italy? Did you did you ever drive there? Maybe I no, I didn't drive, but I rode a lot in cars. And when I'd come back to Kenya, thrice my friend was would, would tell me you're driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh. Until the last time he just he just let me be until I was like, Oh, I'm on the wrong side of the road because yeah. I was so used to being exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And also, and also the currency. Okay. Advice I would give right. people that I was given is yeah. don't convert, don't convert euros oh, in your head. Don't do that. Yeah. You will never do anything. Yeah. You will never do anything. I, I I once took a bus ride that was three pounds fifty, and I converted it to Kenya shillings. It <laughs> came to about seven shillings. Don't even. And I'm coming from a place where jumping into a matatu would cost you twenty shillings. I'm like, I'm paying five hundred shillings for 
Oh, I almost got out. So don't convert. The mark don't is convert. not marking. <laughs> don't no, no. Just let it be. Let it be. If they tell you five, five, five euros, just give them. Don't convert. That's true. The shilling is not strong anyway, so it's not it's not their fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, we could talk about more culture shocks. Obviously, I am I'm yes. sure. I'm so sure you had so many of them. Honestly, it's, it's just <laughs> I, I need you to give us one more as towards the end of this session, obviously. So I want us to go into the question section. And uh, right here, I'm going to start with what is right here. We have Nanjoe saying, this is very encouraging. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we have Joas um, applied for I. Uh, he met a joint Erasmus program, Tenable in Netherlands, Belgium, and Czech Republic, but I was not lucky this year. I'm not giving up here. I will keep trying for this scholarship. Absolutely. If anything, whatever you gain from this session, really, just keep trying, obviously, right? What do you have to say about that, Cornelius? Obviously, it's, it's, it's just about try, try, try. Try again, try again, yes. fail again, fail better. Absolutely. Her love is Queen. Hey, hi there. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Angela, um, hello. Thanks, Lieutenant Dr. Okello. This is very informative. My question is, do you think that your internship at UNEP played a major role in you getting the Erasmus scholarship? Very good question. I, I, this question can be seen two ways. Um... I think being in the in UNEP helped me being in a position yeah. to yeah. meet somebody who told me about the program. Okay. I think that's the role okay. it played. Yeah. Um, yeah. The same way being in KU <laughs> got me a degree that enabled me to qualify for the program. Yeah. But in yeah. terms of work experience as in working in the UN, I don't think it played a role because my master's programs did not require work experience. Okay. They just needed you okay. to have achieved at least minimum of a B, which is, which is a second upper. So right. in terms of work experience, right. it didn't play much of a role because they were not looking for work experience in okay. this particular program. Yeah. However, yeah. being in the UN yeah. gave me the opportunity to be in the same environment with somebody who was familiar with this program. Okay. Ah, yeah. yes. Yes, yes, yes. So it, it was a matter of being you, you being at the right place at the right time. Yes. Really? Yes, being at the right place at the right time. Yeah, okay. Some people call it luck. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I mean, it's, it's at least you are doing an internship at the right place. The right company. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, please provide your suggestion on how we can improve the rejected Erasmus application. I've spoken about this too much, so I need to you to speak about it too as well. <laughs> so. I, I think this is case specific. Yeah. Um. Because it, it depends on why you are rejected. Yes. That, that, that would inform how to improve it. If you are rejected because they wanted work experience, get work experience. Right. If you are rejected because they insisted on English proficiency, get the English yes. test. If they, you are rejected because um, there were too many applicants, yeah. there is nothing you can do about that except apply again. So there is not one specific way to improve. I think yeah. it really does depend on why on, on why they turned you down. I I I I I am I, I am so, I'm struggling using the word rejection. <laughs> it's a very bad communication. Let's 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 soften the punch and say they turned you down. Okay. Turned you down. Turned you down they is turned a you down. Yes. So perhaps yeah. we'll turned you down because your statement of purpose did not stipulate exactly why you want to be in the program. Yes. Again. Ah okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you pointed out something, and this is one of the things that I keep advising people who apply for these programs. And yeah. this is advice that I was given by somebody who got two Yale scholarships, okay, did her master's, uh, undergrad and master's, and worked in recruitment offices. A lot of times, when you're applying for these international things, it's not really about your grades, yes, a lot of it has to do with your statement, your motivational okay. statement. Why do you want to do this? Yes, so you have to write a very strong personal statement. And one thing to avoid that a lot of us from the continent like doing is giving a poverty story. Yeah. Oh, I come from a poor village. We have no yeah. money, blah, blah, blah. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. A lot of people have written that before. Your personal statement should be concentrate on what your strengths are, what your interests are, how yeah. this program will benefit you, achieve your goals. Yeah. My goal is to be a world-renowned researcher. This yeah. will set me to on that path. Um, 
and then also what value you will add to the program. Yeah. You can always tell them you'll bring diversity, you'll bring different ideas from, from, from Kenya, yeah. your past experiences, how have they informed you and what can you bring to the table? So avoid talking about you have no money, you come from a poor country, Africa is poor, avoid doing that. Yeah, Africa is a country. <laughs> anyway, oh. <you> know, <laughs> I've Continent. heard enough of this actually, because uh, it all stems from the statement of purpose. Because most of the yeah. Erasmus uh, applications that you find is that also as as Africans, the way we speak and we use several words to explain one thing, we put it on paper, and that's <laughs> how to do it. Because you end up maybe with with a whole a thousand words, yet you had been asked for five hundred words, and you're like, okay. Um, I, I need to tell my story, but not everything is relevant on that statement of purpose for a very specific program. So you have to reverberate again uh, towards what they are asking for. Follow the instructions. That is something that we never do. Follow the mm. instructions to the letter and let someone else you know, read your statement of purpose. Like we had this mentorship program with, with, with uh, the Erasmus alumni in Kenya and Cornelius, obviously you can attest to this, that some people actually never even submitted their statement of purpose to us because um, I, I guess they felt it's too much work. Do the work. You need to do the work and, and write that yeah. statement of purpose because nobody is going to write it for you. We don't know who you are and what you've been through and your experiences, you know. So that is something that you also have to to have the spirit of do it. You can do it yourself, you know. So <laughs> uh, I think uh, that that is that is another thing. But we are not suggesting that that is the reason as to why you are turned down. So um, yes. please keep trying again. Uh, perhaps have someone else check your statement of purpose, your CV, your general application. Really, we possibly would definitely be opening up the um, you know the mentorship program in September. Hopefully there will be a, a better, um, you know, interaction between the mentors and the, the mentees because that is something that we also noticed the other time. So hopefully you can be able to join in. And if you have not joined the Facebook group of the, the Kenyan uh, chapter, the Erasmus Kenyan chapter Facebook group, I usually post quite a lot of information right there so you can join it. Um, and I will leave obviously a link on this uh, video so that you can be able to join and uh, start um, you know, your process as early as now. You can even begin writing your statement of purpose as early as now now have somebody uh, read it out and so that by the time the application is opening up you're just going to post your application without having to worry about oh i have to write this i have to get a recommendation letter i have to get my cv europass format it's a lot it can be a lot and you don't have basically to, yeah take your time to 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 to, to, to prepare the application don't yeah. do, don't do it the the kenyan word for beating the deadline like yeah. this this takes time and it takes thought. So be a bit, take a, like dedicate time to it. Yeah. Dedicate time to it. Absolutely. All right. Very interesting life journey, Dr. Okello. A testament to your hard work and Kenyan hustler spirit. Hey, hustler. Uh, would you be willing to review applications before an applicant submits to Erasmus and not Geo? I've been doing that I've, I've, for for quite a number of years. I've been first of all, thank you very much for the statement. I don't know whether I'm a hard worker. I keep telling people I'm I'm the laziest person you'll ever meet, but they don't believe me. <laughs> I don't like working. I don't like going to school. I don't like anything. I'm just yeah. I'm feeling upwards. I'm feeling upwards anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm, for the longest time we've been doing this, and that, that's part of what we've been doing in the mentorship program, especially for Erasmus. Yeah. Um, we ask you submit your applications to us first. Let's check for you. Yeah. Um, we have some insight about what they want or what they don't want. We've um yeah. been through the process, so we can give you tidbits, we can give you pointers. Again, this is not to say that once I check it and I give you suggestions, yeah. guaranteed you will get it. No, 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 no. I can just point you in the right direction, I can tell you things that worked for me. So, yeah, I'm ready, willing, and able. Okay. Really willing and able. Been I've done it before. Uh, we used to do it. We used to we used to go to campuses. In fact, we used to travel to campuses, and I would always leave my contact information. Right. We would always leave our contact information. Um, you'd be surprised that uh, visit having visited close to six, seven, eight universities. Yes. I only received one. One person sent me the application to review. Yeah. One person. Yeah. She 
she didn't get the Erasmus program, but she got another program in Germany. Okay. Um, so I was very happy about that. But yeah, if you have um if you need to, I can have a look at your, your application for you. I can give you pointers. Yep. Uh a warning, I will use a lot of track changes. Some people yep. think this is rude. Um, so <laughs> if you if you end up seeing your 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 application is looking all red, don't take it personally. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Just, Cornelius, <laughs> yes. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> Always ready with my red pen. Always ready with my red pen. <laughs> so so get ready for that, guys. I mean, like, obviously, reach out to us. We we are very yeah. much available. You, you know the thing you can do? You can even go on LinkedIn. Look for people who've been through your exact specific program that you're interested in and introduce yourself to these people. Let them know, hey, I'm trying to apply for this program. Can you go through my statement of purpose? Because this would be the very, very, very best person to even go through your, your statement of purpose because they are freshly from the program and, uh, you know, they've, they've been going through the program. Obviously, they are maybe current students. So this would be actually the best person to go through your Erasmus um, statement of purpose. But we are here to help because we've been through the program. I've, I've read enough statements of purpose already and I'm like, okay. Uh, I think <laughs> I think there's a lot there's a lot that goes into into a statement of purpose that needs uh, a lot of help, you know. Even and the CV, uh, even the yeah. even the CV, not just the statements, but even the CV. Yeah. A sure bet way of 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 doing it is da downloading the the Europass template and using it for your for your CV. Yes, yes, absolutely. And in fact, the thing is obviously that some programs do not necessarily request for a Europass. Uh, format but it is it is actually recommended that you do the europe yeah. so uh please download it ahead of time like i have posted that on on the facebook group a million times so just go there search for it you can have the template you can already just begin to put in your details so you don't have to hurry or or worry about it at the very 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 last minute you know so anyway Let's keep on going to the next question here. So, uh, greetings. My lack of experience of work experience denied me an Erasmus scholarship earlier this year. Do you think a seven month volunteer experience would help my next application? It's not denied, it's turned down. Is it turned down? <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. politely turned you down. Uh, it could help, but then again, the, the question is how much work experience do they want? Right. That okay. that becomes a question. Yeah. Um, go back to go, go back to the, the requirements, see how much experience they asked for. Yeah. If they asked for three months, yeah. seven months of experience will definitely help you. If they wanted two years, then you need to put in another one year and some change. So it really does depend on, on the requirements. Uh, the reason I'm saying it depends on the requirements is I'm sure we I might by repeating something we already know is that yeah. in as much as the Erasmus Pro Erasmus Mudas program is funded by one body. All yeah. the all all the different courses have got different are run by different universities, so yeah. they've got different requirements. Yes. Yeah. So familiarize yourself with the requirements of each individual course that you want to apply for. So, yeah. for example, uh, I think this is Olivia. Uh, Olivia, go back to the requirements, ask, and yeah. also maybe I should have pointed this earlier is do not yeah. be afraid to contact the the contact person for the particular program with any question you have. Absolutely. For example, if if they denied it for because of work experience, ask, go back and write and tell them, I have been working for the past seven months. Is this okay? Is yeah. this enough? Yeah. So they can they can they can tell you. Yeah. And just to also echo your sentiments, obviously, is that you know, all consortiums usually reply to you. They will definitely reply to you yeah. when you send an email. So you don't have to worry about, oh, if I ask, maybe they will not reply. Um, no, they will. 100% reply to you. And then again, um, you know, like I mentioned before, there are newer programs that have already begun, um, you know, from 2021 to 2027, we will have a rollout of newer programs and they might maybe even not need that much of a volunteer experience because I can tell you for a fact, the new Erasmus programs usually towards the very first, um, you know, applicants, there might not be very stringent rules. So that will be the best yeah. time to really shoot your shot. 
So um, again, you know, you can apply for as many uh, more programs, more, more than three programs. And in fact, um, things have changed. Like I said, another one thing that has changed is the fact that um, now they will not have the, the caveat that they, will, they can only have three people uh, at a go in one program. I mean, three, um, for example, they can only have three Kenyans in one program. They can have more now because it's going to be a very um, incorporative pro uh, program moving forward, whereby they will have, they will gauge everybody who has applied for a certain program, and they will only have like at least 10% of the people coming from one country joining the program. So you have quite a lot of, of, of opportunity here. So shoot your shot. I hope to see you in September and obviously um, see whether you can be able to, to apply for, for it once again. Peterson, thank you so much. You are saying you're enjoying this. Thank you so much for staying on and I'm definitely going for it next opening. Yes, opening in September all the way to February. Uh, some might um, extend in March depending on, on, on logistics and obviously the attract of funding. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, and then Kapu, you say Thank you for this session. It has set many on the right path, especially those in the line of research and development like me. The knowledge you have shared is timely and now it has given me power. Thank you so much, Dr. Cornelius. That's all you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. You start to make me blush. I will not blush. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I will hold you to that. You know, the internet never. <laughs> <forgets you. laughs> uh my granny says hello kawunda um i don't know what that means perhaps <laughs> it's okay. okay i know what it means it's fine <laughs> so as we, wrap up this... <laughs> <laughs> as we wrap up this conversation i just want you to um to to tell me and and maybe obviously from from experiencing the fact that you have been speaking to people um about Erasmus in Kenya and even other African countries, honestly, um, you know, letting them know that there are these opportunities abroad. Because again, like if someone never told you about it in UNEP, you would never have thought about Erasmus. You would never have even applied for it. So what are some of the pitfalls that you have seen that um, Africans or rather people hailing from different African countries and, um, you know, they hear about this opportunity they get excited about it. They perhaps even go online and look for it and begin the application and then boom, they are done. They, are, they, they, they get bored and everything happens in between. And then to the very last minute, at the very deadline is when they are running and rushing, uh, you know, to, to, to maybe finish this application. But that is just one of the pitfalls, really. So what are some of the pitfalls that you have seen, um, you know, with African prospective students who wanted to come abroad and how can we mitigate this for them? We can have a, a, a session about just the pitfalls. I think we can have a one hour session about this. But we can. Yeah. You said one of them, I think you've pointed out one of them. Um, we we like beating the deadline yeah we like beating the deadline so we wait until the end and what happens is if you're rushing to do it then the quality gets compromised yeah. um i think another thing that i've seen is there's a lot of skepticism okay in like, yeah. um, especially in kenya like yeah. eh, this this sounds too good to be yeah. true this yeah. sounds too good to be true well like what's the hook i mean i i was that person but at least in 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 my skepticism, I yeah. still tried, but right. many people just, 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 um, just didn't want to. And then I think another thing is that there's a certain, again, this is just my perspective. There is a certain okay. level of comfort, yes. um, because applying and going to Europe is stepping out of your comfort zone. You yes. you you're venturing into the unknown. Right. So first of all, just they're applying. So yes. the the problem being that there are people, there are some people who fear failure. So they won't want to put themselves out, out there unless there's a guarantee that they'll get through. So whenever you're talking to them, I tell them, um, this is a highly competitive program. Okay. So yeah. um, you're competing with other people around the world. Yes. So like, if, um, <laughs> maybe I can't do that, or maybe I'm not good enough. So there's some inferiority complex. And then people are like, hey, now yeah. why would I want to go all that way just to, mm -hmm. just to study? So there, there are a variety of, of, of reasons. Um, what I've seen, like with Nigeria and Ethiopia, I, I've speak, I've spoken to a, 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 some of my Ethiopian colleagues, and 
there seem to be some, I don't want to use the word desperation, but there seems to be some desire to leave the country, maybe because of the economic state. So for them, they become hungrier to apply for anything as long as we get them out there. But in Kenya, we, as I said, there's some level of comfort. There's some, uh, even if I don't get it, it's okay. I'm here. I'm fine. I'm fine. So um, another thing is, I, maybe it's linked to the beating the deadline, but not many people put in that much effort right. in the application. Yeah. Um, and this this is this is not only an Erasmus. And I have worked with people on res, on research projects, people right. with PhDs who yeah. don't put in the work either. Okay. So maybe they don't have they maybe they are they 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 feel they'll just skate by for whatever reason. So and one of what I've learned across what I've learned in yeah. my short life is that a lot of times the work the amount of effort you put in the work reflects yeah. on the results That's so true. if yeah. you could write a proposal yes. you can write up i can write a proposal right now you can give me a subject matter and i will give you a proposal by tomorrow morning i just translate right. yeah. but if you gave me that idea and came back at the end of this month and i took this month working on this proposal the right. quality will be so much different yes. The, the the quality it will be day and night so yeah. a lot of people don't whether they're in a hurry or they just they just don't put in they just don't put in the effort and yeah. some people many people are not reaching out like we put ourselves out there as i yeah. gave you an example talking to universities yeah. across the country not just not just in nairobi we go yeah. all the way to the coast we go yeah, to right. my university in Nairobi, blah blah blah, blah. Yeah. There, there are some of my colleagues who went all the way to jaramogi I, I I wasn't on that trip, but in all that time, you only get one person reaching out to you. So yes. it's yeah. I don't know, but yeah. And and I think the one thing of you know maybe we can try is to show them that we have been through the program once. Yes. So you you can actually do it, and I, I don't know how much more we can do, but um, I guess also. The fact that we are trying to assist you and, and and walk you through the journey so hopefully we can be able to actually you know be motivated enough that you're not alone on this journey there's a lot yeah. there's a whole community applying go ahead just one thing i've remembered also and I, I think it also applies to the job market yeah it also applies to the job market where when you read through the criteria and yeah. you find one thing that excludes you you're like ah you you okay. immediately exclude yourself yeah. um Experience has taught me try, try, just try. Like you've you've nothing to lose, yes. Because not everybody who's going to apply fits mm. the criteria to work. And if you're really really in doubt and yeah. you don't want to waste, not not waste, but put too much effort that will end up in nothing, yeah. contact them. Like for my for my for my PhD, I'm sorry yes. for my, my my postdoc right now. When the call came out, I went through the criteria and there's one thing that that ex was an exclusionary criteria yeah. i emailed the i emailed the the the, 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 the email address there and told them listen everything else checks out except this one thing can i still apply they're yeah. like fine apply okay and end up getting it so, so i so it's it's not that like i was perfect for the yeah. role okay very few times people will be perfect for the role for the role that's true you so don't have to believe that you're enough. yeah what do not disqualify yourself don't exactly. disqualify yourself before. Let you them disqualify you. Don't disqualify yourself. Okay. Perfect. I mean, that, that that is that I think that is just it, honestly. Don't disqualify yourself before you actually um shoot your shot. Like you have nothing to lose, like Dr. Cornelius mentioned here, that you know, this is something that is out there. We've been through the program. We can walk you through as much as we can. And the thing is for you again, shoot your shot, you know. So um i want to end this conversation but i see another question here my program never specified the duration of work experience so i wonder if a seven month a seven month volunteering suffices well that really really depends on the consortium one and also mm -hmm. the, like, like dr cornelius mentioned here uh, the specifications that they have on that program what exactly are they looking for what type of background what type of experience is this because it, you can have a seven month ex volunteering experience but it's not what exactly they are looking for but what i i, I would encourage you uh, to do is to do your due diligence check out that catalog i know the the interface is not very very welcoming but do your due diligence. <laughs> 
and <laughs> look through each of the programs. Take your time. Like Dr. Cornelius mentioned here, if you need to translate, translate, do the work, you know, and, and, and see. This is the program that I uh, would like to do. This is another program that I would like to do. Does my experience actually suffice? for this program so i mean that's why we are here we can look out and, and tell you that hey maybe this would be a better program as opposed to this other one that's why we have the mentoring um you know uh, sessions so please take advantage of them as well so um i, I think that's the much we can do for you honestly but we are here uh, if it doesn't happen this time it will definitely happen the next time also i speak about a lot of um scholarship opportunities on this um platform so in, in the eu has lots and lots and lots of other programs that you can take advantage of as well um and um you know from the orange knowledge programs in the netherlands to the dad in germany to um programs in italy in spain all these places you know if you follow me on twitter i usually post um several opportunities quite 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 a number of them every single week so you can shoot your short shot in any one of them to feel that it actually fits in your profile so um i will uh end this conversation because we have been here for quite a long time and dr cornelius <laughs> there's one thing that you owe this channel you need to tell mm -hmm. us one other culture shock that you actually experienced when you were in europe and you will never get over it really it has stuck with you I, I, other than the driving there has to be something else that you can tell us about maybe it's about food we don't know i, I have one i have one i have one but i i, I fear it might be offensive <laughs> let me put it let me, let me put it in a politically correct way okay. i was not expecting how the food tasted like in the uk oh Ooh. that is loaded <laughs> Yeah, that, that that was very different for me. Okay. Even the salt and the sugar tasted different. 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 Yeah. In a good kind of way, in a bad kind of way. You hated it. Uh, uh, let me just tell Olivia yeah. <laughs> that she should email the, the program coordinator and ask them about her volunteering it will suffice. Yes, I'm changing the subject. <laughs> Not on this I said time. I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to be offensive. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that is no. one of the things that you actually never really, really never settled well with you. Never ordered well. With oh, you. I know a culture shock. Uh, not culture shock per se, but yeah, something to do with food. Yes. When I found out the Big Mac is not that big. Oh. <laughs> you expected it to be as big as. Uh, I walked into a McDonald's for the first time ever, excited. Oh my God, McDonald's. And I used a Big Mac. The yes. name says Big Mac, right? And yes. then they gave me this tiny burger. I'm like, what is this? I, I walked out and went to the Burger King that was next to it and bought a burger because I was not going to be full on that. Like, nah, I'm not so, kidding. No. Do you want to mean that Burger King has bigger hamburgers than... Maybe maybe it was the McDonald's in the UK that was like that, but that Big Mac was anything but big. Oh, like, wow. I no, that was no. that was disappointing. That was disappointing. <laughs> yeah. It really was. Yeah. It really was. It yeah. keeps me. Did you, at you ever get it? Did you get over that? Or as you can see, it's it's been thirteen years and I'm still discussing it. Oh, so God. obviously not. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> Yeah, this this yeah, this is not good. So I mean, no. I, I think hope that you are able to at least cook your ugali um in the UK or in Spain. Um to... interesting enough, I never I never carried any ingredients from Kenya. Oh wow. I said I wanted I, I wanted to immerse myself yes. into the whole culture. Yes. So there's no need for me to bring Kenya. If I bring Kenya to the UK, then I am just Kenya in the UK. So I I I the only the only thing I used to carry was pilau masala. Okay. Still, that's very Kenyan or Indian. Yes, that was the only thing. Like, that was the only thing. Yeah. Everything else I said I'm going to get from there. Okay. I tried using their flour to make ugali. It's just yeah. not the same. Yeah. Especially for somebody who's used to the ugali from the posho meal. No. It's just not the same. No. And these are some no. of the things that, guys, you're listening to this. Honestly, they will affect you. Believe me, you. <laughs> yes. They <laughs> affect your quality of life. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is not just for banter it is the reality of life because you will live yeah. it and and you will experience it and the differences in culture food you know education systems all these kind of things we can speak about this for days and days and right yes. you know and to date i i still do have some culture shocks that i cannot live with as much as i live in portugal <laughs> but i just cannot get over it never so anyways guys I do hope that this has been a, a great conversation for you and to kick you um, into into actually doing that application, honestly. So I hope that you have gained something and a lot of, of this was just to pretty much guide you through into how it, what it looks like, you know, after after doing an Erasmus. Is it worth it? Yes, it is definitely worth it. Um, we are an epitome that, yes, for sure, having gone through the program has lifted us up into places that we never expected, like Dr. Cornelius here. He would never even be called Dr. Cornelius today if it was not for Erasmus, believe me, believe me, do you know? So, <laughs> so I think um, I think for, for, for this session, I just want um, him to, 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 to tell us one parting shot. What did Erasmus, if you can say in one word, Erasmus made me? Better. Better, better something else <laughs> you said one word <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm kenyan it, it, it never one word. <laughs> hey Eras, erasmus made me realize my full potential absolutely amazing i knew there was something else so mm -hmm. thank you so much for taking your time on your busy, busy schedule to, to really interact with us here. And guys, if you would like to, to um, reach out to us, please leave your comment um, on the comment section below and I will get onto it. If you would like to also join the Erasmus community um, on Facebook, I will also leave a link towards the Erasmus um, Kenyan chapter Facebook group where we interact, I post quite a lot of, of, of um, information there um, where you can be able to even search for information that I have posted before that can be very helpful towards your journey. I know you have several questions. It's always the same that people have questions when they want to, to, to apply for something and looking for something, um, you know, to, to, to may, maybe try and see whether they, they qualify for this uh, opportunity. You do qualify, so please, Join that group so that uh, you can get all the resources that you do require for this process. And once again, thank you so much for hanging out with us on this Thursday. Until next time, please subscribe, share this video. Bye. <laughs>